to. Good evening again. My second guest this evening is Richard Foster, also a candidate for the one year and three year position mm -hmm. on the select board. Welcome. Thank you. And uh, since I don't know much about you, this is going to be a lot of fun for me because I'll get to meet you and get to okay. get to see what you're all about. So, um, for our viewers and for myself, uh, who are you? What have? How long have you been in town? Okay. Well, I'm a relatively okay. uh, newcomer to town. Okay. Uh, my name is Richard Foster. I retired from the National Park Service after 32 plus years of service, and my son has been a resident of town for 10 or 15 years, and. Our son was up here, and our grandson was up here, and my mo my wife said we're moving to Massachusetts. Were you in D.C.? Uh, we, that was my last duty station, mm -hmm. yes, down to D.C. area, Virginia. Mm -hmm, nice. So we moved up here about three years ago and settling in the community. I've been on capital planning for the last three years. Well, you just jumped right into the, uh, the Well, play. it was public service. Uh -huh. You know, most of my career with the National Park Service dealt with public service, so it was I, I'm not ready to retire quite yet. I still have the yearn to be involved. Good, good. So why, uh, why are you running? Well, I think each member on the select board should bring a unique set of skills to the board. And my particular skill set uh, deals with personnel management and facility management. I spent my 32 years in the National Park Service developing long-range programs and executing day labor and long-range uh, maintenance plans. Uh, I looked at the community and I saw what I considered some very noticeable deficiencies and that's why I originally got on capital planning because I said I need to find out more why the conditions that I'm seeing are present because I'm, I'm accustomed to it. I'm terrible <coughs> to go on we vacation. We don't have, just for information, we don't have the budget you were, you were working with. No, <laughs> but I, I'm terrible to go on vacation because I never enjoy myself. I'm always looking at deficiencies. So <laughs> I, you know, when I ride the roads, I see needs mm -hmm. and, and structures. So it's part of, part of my are. life cycle. Yeah. So that, that really is the reason. Mm -hmm. I, I feel that I have a skill set that can help the community. And I'm one of five people and I would like mm -hmm. to try to increase the emphasis on long-range programmatic planning in mm -hmm. the town of Longmeadow. So we have a long-range plan. Mm -hmm. You're familiar with it? Yes. And uh, we talk planning all the time, so you don't feel like we've... You just mean in terms of infrastructure, or do you mean in general? I mean in general. Um, we've, I've had a lot of discussions with the current town manager and, of course, with the select board from capital perspective. Uh, we currently have a five-year program Capital. And on capital and, and a five-year program as far as I'm concerned is an implementation program mm -hmm. long-range planning if you're dealing with life cycle on asphalt is 12 to 15 to 20 years you need to have a plan that's reaching out 15 to 20 years and a lot of people have difficulty sensing the the, the importance <coughs> of that but when you start to assemble this plan and put it together for a community it starts to bring about the total cost that the community faces in the next 15 years instead of just a five-year window. Mm -hmm. uh, do I, you think you can do, can you think you can project um, finances and that sort of thing out that far in a in a municipality in a state like Massachusetts? You, you can, can't rely on No, uh, we're not talking about projecting. Financial resources as yeah, much. I'm not talking about projecting revenues. I'm talking about the projection on what it would cost on the infrastructure. Okay, but whether but, you're going to address it or not is a different issue. Well, that's true because okay. we, we are not in a position now to address it because we do not know what the total costs are. Mm -hmm. We currently have four to five engineering studies that are about <coughs> three years old. Uh, and their data, and that's at a point of maybe 170 million. If you take off some school projects, it drops it back to maybe 90 million. You're talking about capital projects in general, or just they were engineering studies yeah, on right. our infrastructure, our roads, our schools, included um, buildings, though, and including yeah. buildings. Okay. And they were scratching the surface, but they were still not in-depth studies. Mm -hmm. And at this point, I don't see being on capital. I don't see the emphasis coming in that shows that these plans are being matured and, and pushed to the future. Mm -hmm. I think we're basically using the study as just reaching and take one piece and I look deeper into a program. Mm -hmm. When I talk to people, I, I like to see where are you going to be 15 years from now? What is a 17 year drain on this community for infrastructure maintenance? Sure. Uh, unfortunately, most of the stuff that I've dealt with in my career is, is not considered sea maintenance, it's considered no sea maintenance. It's sewage systems, it's water lines that are under the ground, it's the road bed problems, mm -hmm. uh, it's the internal components of structures. Well, when you say sea, you mean sea. Visually <laughs> sea, yes. <laughs> you know, not the, mowing, not the mowing of the grass, we're talking about the turf quality, the mm -hmm. soil, the soils, and, and this type of issues. Mm -hmm. 
So it's more of the facility management approach. So you're less of a programmatic um, issue person as much of a, as more of an infrastructure facility kind of. No, I'm person. very programmatic, but it's it's on the on the vent of the facility management. Yeah, that's what and I mean. When we say facility management, it's asset management. It's not just structures or roads. It's it's the entire program. Sure. Uh, you can do the same type of asset management even in procurement divisions, mm -hmm. and you know how many. How many procurement actions do we get in a given cycle of time? Did you grow up in the South? You seem to have a little, I've little bit of lived an in many, many, many different states oh, with the National Park Service. Service. Yeah, oh, great. Okay. So, um, so, one of the issues we've had over the years, which um, you may have a passion about, then, is a new town yard. What's mm -hmm. your What's your feeling about uh, a new town yard? Well, the present yard. Uh, and many residents have not visited the present yard, I'm sure. No, they haven't been invited it, to, it probably. Is, <laughs> it, it, is, it is in a terrible state of disrepair. It's amazing we can do what we can do, I, it, isn't it? <laughs> and there's, there's a lot of items down there that uh, are crucial items. Uh, it's not a good way to do business, but I understand we've got a lot of priorities. But the public works facility should have been replaced many years we ago. tried. Yeah, many years ago. <laughs> it was one of our very famous, one of my, when I was a uh, select per person, de big defeats on a yeah. override was the, but the, I realize, the new town yard. Yeah, there are a lot of options on that, too. You don't have to build a brand new. You may, I've not seen any of the engineering studies performed on this, this structure yet, but there are always a lot of options when you're retrofitting DPW facilities. So do you, do you support uh, discussions about a a new location and a, a new site or? I don't think we have the, I've not seen the information yet as far as the engineering reports on the existing structure on what the cost would be involved and the other environmental factors at the present location. The flood plan. Yeah, and, and I, they may, the studies may be out there, I just haven't read them yet. Yeah, okay. But I think we need to definitely think about doing something about the public works facility. Mm -hmm. It is it is not a good environment to have people working in. Yeah, it was, the, the scenario was, if I recall it correctly, it was a long time ago when we tried to re do replace this mm -hmm. one, was there was a vote on uh, the DPW, we had, an over, had to do an override. It was right after mm -hmm. Proposition 2 and a half came into Massachusetts. Right. So we did, we did a, we tried to do a two million, that's all it was at mm -hmm. that time to re do a new yard down there. It's pretty cheap. Che well, at the time we thought, ooh. And so it was defeated pretty handily when we went for the override for the DPW. And then about, I don't know, six months later or something, there was a renovation of the store's library. Same amount of money, if I recall correctly. Do you remember this mm -hmm. correctly? Passed without a blink. It's just overwhelmingly the town passed. I was just, I was in absolute shock. It was just, it wasn't DPW. Nobody knew where it was. Nobody right. knew the disrepair. We didn't do our homework. And the, yeah. the library, just everybody knew where the library was, and it just passed. That, that is unfortunate, but you've been in the community and you've seen this come down before. Maintenance is very easy to defer. Oh, wow, well, yes. Because it just lingers, but the only bad thing when you defer it, it costs you more when you finally have to correct it. Sure. So you're familiar with... Um, you're familiar with capital planning, obviously, and mm -hmm. you've got a large warrant article mm -hmm. uh, coming up right. uh, this this year. Uh, are you familiar? What's your familiarity with like the community preservation process and that? I've I've read the the community preservation guidelines, and I've been looking. I have some concern on some of the projects. I I feel that there should be more of a dovetailing with community uh, preservation and capital because mm -hmm. I think. We're basically evaluating the same project, and yet there's no coordination between the two groups. Certainly, dialogue would be a good thing. I, I think a dialogue needs to be there, and I and I. I thought I, we've tried that a little bit better, but didn't happen. It's not happening, no. Oh, okay. And and I don't think that a project should be showing up on on two programs. Is it? Yes, there there's some parallel programming taking this year? place. Yes. Which one? Uh, the uh, heating system was on our program for the... Uh, but it didn't get on the warrant. No, it's not oh, on the good. warrant. Oh, no, oh. no, we're talking about the evaluation process. Oh, okay, okay. You know what happens is department heads want to play their odds, I think, so they apply to both. I understand. Uh, but I, I think that's a yeah. great... I understand, but you know, there was a reason that capital planning would turn down the community center heating system, and yet it's been picked up by CPA. And there's no coordination or communication as sure, to. Well, that should be an easy fix. I think it's an I easy fix. I think that's fix. an easy fix. Easy fix, Good. but just just a piece. Good. So tell me a little bit. We're in the process of the town manager search. Mm -hmm. um, I asked the same question to Mr. Brasky. Um, any particular qualities that you think are important for the town manager? Yes, I, I 
as you can tell from my background in planning and long-range planning, I think uh, that's a skill set that we should be looking for very severely. We should look for a person that has uh, dealt with the issues that we currently have in this town, which are revenue base. How do you find new sources of revenue? Uh, we need to look at a person that has a proven track record for setting up long-range planning and identifying and maturing programs and going for state programs where they're available, such as the Chapter 90 and the, all the other programs that are out there. Uh, we know the person by charter is going, to, is going to be up to speed on all the laws in the state and administratively that's pretty well covered. But when we get off on the optional issues, which I think long-range planning and, and this type, is, that's the items I would like to see this person have a, a strong skill set on. Mm -hmm. Good. What about the long-range plan? Do you think it's uh, ready for an update, the one that we've did? I, yes. Uh, our plan is, it, 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 it's only good for a limited amount of time. How long? Well, it depends on how fast the community is changing. It could be two years. Mm -hmm. I mean, a plan needs to be constantly. You can't do a long-range plan and put it on a shelf and walk away from it. Right. It, it needs to be brought back and, and, and looked at on, on a reoccurring basis. You mean, uh, help me out here, you mean brought back and looked at or rewritten? Well, it, it's one of the same. Review the plan and make sure it's current for the needs of the community. So does that require a consultant ex expenses or does it well, require it, just doing the looking at the plan? I, mean. I think I think it depends if you have a good planning team going on in town because you should be able to take a plan. You have the director of DPW, you have a chief of police, you have good strong division chiefs that should be able to sit down in a forum basis and look at the planning efforts in this community and see if there's enough collaborative efforts going on between the departments and the transparency that we, we need. Mm -hmm. uh, I listened to the interview before where we talked about the storm damage and I, I have some very definite feelings on the storm. Uh, and share if you like. Well, we went, <laughs> we, we went through an excellent response on the storm. It was a devastating storm. And where we, where we did not continue with the effort was the secondary aspect of the storm. And it was where we should have been in and fleshed out the program that is going to be carried on now by DPW or with, with money that's being allocated. How would we have done that at that time? Well, we had our staff out with the contractor. They were taking pictures and we could have been inventorying that day. Oh. And, and, roll, and now I, there's no evidence that this has been done yeah, or all these costs know. could be rolled together. But we're five months, six months after the storm. By this point, I think within two months, the select board should have been presented with a budget for the final cleanup aspect. Mm -hmm. We already knew what the contractor was going to do and we knew what was going to be our future by, responsibility. By final cleanup, do you mean the, the, the limbs that are broken? Mm -hmm. the, the, that, that, that aspect. The limbs that are broken, the removals of trees, the removal of stumps. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, even getting off to the point of where are we going to revegetate in the community? Mm -hmm. You know, I've, I've got some stuff that I've written before. When I look at the trees, I mentioned the select board uh, two years ago. I said, you have a major problem with trees in this community. In what regard? They're hazardous. The town is filled with hazardous trees. Six trees. Yes. So they're, Six they're, trees. All, they're, they're matured. They should be removed and replanted if Ooh. you're going to have the trees because they're dangerous. <laughs> you saw a lot of the trees that came down have got a hollow core in them. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. Some uh, there are some residents in the town that are, and I don't know them all. I was just copied on an email about them, uh, looking at a, a historic tree preservation mm -hmm. bylaw. Are you familiar with this? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I had not. Yeah. I didn't know much about. I don't know much about it, but that might be contrary to what you're. Well, I had. About. I mean, it, I, mature trees are beautiful in my mind, but yeah. Well, in in the in the National Park Service, I had Class A landscapes where each tree was labeled and identified, and that was a prescribed planting program. But we cared for those trees, and there was a point where you had to remove the tree mm -hmm. and plant a new tree. Sure. But uh, you know, like I had a lot of certified arborists dealing in the, the program that were out inspecting the trees, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, uh, when I've talked to Mike, we don't have much reinforcement on certified arbory or a tree crew in his organization. Oh no, he's, he's it probably. And yeah. with the amount of trees we have in this community, I, I expressed my feelings to the select board that yes, we could have a tree crew in this community and I'd like to keep them busy 365 days a year. How would you pay for all these things you're talking well, about? Well, it's not a matter of paying individually, it's a matter of identifying, as I said before, laying out all of the things that stand before us mm -hmm. and taking the highest priority needs and starting to fund them one at a time. Okay, so but in, in this community, as you well know, because mm -hmm. you've lived here 
a little bit. Um, we have very strong support for the schools, mm -hmm. which take more than 50% mm -hmm. of the budget. So how would you balance trees with that? Well, I'm not going to balance trees against the school element. I'm going to go back and look at the total picture okay. and lay out. There, there's possibly some programs that we can de-emphasize, mm -hmm. even, within, even within public works. Well, with, without reviewing everything and bringing it all on the table, it's hard to determine at this okay. point. So there's nothing that jumps out at you? No, I, that would be unfair. Yeah, okay. It'd be unfair until you get in and actually start sure. to study and crank up all sure. the resources. Now, schools across the country are given high priority. In Northern Virginia, the budget, I believe, was 70-some percent or 74 percent of the Well, it depends on how you budget. cut that. We don't, when I'm saying 60, it doesn't include Benny's. So, right, you know, right. It, but it is, a, it is a high-cost operation with the, with the salary base and sure. with the technological advances. So what's your sense about our tax base and our override position and that sort of thing? I mean, relatively, I'm, I'm saying this as a, you're a relative, rel mm -hmm. relative newcomer to the community. How do mm -hmm. you feel about, I mean, often that's a tension among residents is that these taxes uh, on a real estate are some of the highest taxes I've experienced in my career mm -hmm. uh, I understand there may be a reason but uh, so as elected official would you work to keep them as low as possible or would you be well uh, every, interested in you know yeah, spending everybody would hope to keep taxes as low as possible but I think I think there's another step beyond that. Again, we're talking about the development of a long-range plan so we identify the needs of the community. We also need to go in and start to look at individual budgets. And even if it's a line item analysis or a zero-based budget approach, I think we need to do a serious look at budgets. For too many years, I believe, you've almost taken a 2.5% increase. This year, we're just a little bit under. And we need to look at the budgets very closely mm -hmm. and do let the people come to the table and justify these. I, you're, you're saying that they're not. No, I'm not saying they're not. I'm saying I'm not seeing evidence of it. Mm -hmm. Because I, I came from an environment where I had 140 people working for me. At the end of the year, I could show you records where the 140 people's worth of hours had been spent that year on what resources in my organization. Mm -hmm. And we laid it out on the table. I don't think we're in a position to do that within the town. We have two maintenance management systems, one with the school and one with the, uh, one with the DPW. So there's not a lot of interconnectivity there or record keeping or documentation of work hours. And when you start to bring in this accountability aspect is when light bulbs start coming on. You mm -hmm. start to pick out areas where you maybe could spend your money better. Let me ask you uh, then, you, you, I don't know if you're referring to this or not, but there's this an article on the warrant, article number 28, that asks us to spend $10,000 to look at the way resources or personnel are allocated in public works. Is that something you would support? No. I think that is an internal function within the community. Okay, so you're not. I, I think that issue needs to be looked at because I have brought the same issue up to the select board that mm -hmm. we are. Uh, sometimes using sewage enterprise and water enterprise funds for items that I thought shouldn't have been mm -hmm. used for. Legitimate and real, but to the point of saying why. We, we've got infrastructure problems on our water system and our sewage that we need to divert all those dollars towards. Mm -hmm. uh, even down to the point of buying equipment out of, out of the funds and saying 30 percent, 50 percent. Mm -hmm. Well, I've been in the business too many years. I, that's, that needs to be looked at. Okay, so how do you, there's always, there's been a chism also often in the community about the schools and the town mm -hmm. relationship. How would you feel you would work well, in I'm, that environment? I'm caught between, my wife is a professional educator. Okay. And I've been in the, Does she the, work in? Uh, no, ma'am, she's, she's retired. Okay. But uh, I've been That's around the... That's thing. No, ma'am, I don't get that. <laughs> I, I, she's, I've been <laughs> That's a, great. I've been around the educational... Uh, establishment my entire career and, and I've argued and I've agreed and back and forth I, I realize education quality education is going to cost money it's an investment you're making in the future of our country I understand facilities cost money you have to have good facilities as I support good facilities for DPW you have to have quality facilities for the children especially these days with the electronics and all the new things mm -hmm. this is their world it's not our world the way we were in school we have to make improvements now am i going to tell you there's not some discretionary funds in the school budget that could be reallocated towards other stuff 
I can't tell you that because I would have to believe there's discretionary money in every budget mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that need that could be reallocated. So my question really is, I understand, obviously you, these, are, these are great answers, mm -hmm. but so I'm a school committee person and you're a select mm -hmm. person and we disagree. How are we going to work this out? We do it through a collaborative effort such as we're doing here. Let's lay the books out and let's go for justifications. If you if you become but for too, me, I want five teachers, and you want a new truck. I want. Well, I understand you do, and I, and I understand that there is a there I mean, is. I, a, I'm just making believe. No, and I <laughs> no, I think it's a very good point. But I, I understand for the community, <clears throat> if you're studying everything in this community, one of those projects is going to take on a higher priority than the other, and it and, may very well be the I'm, five teachers. And, yes, and it could be a matter of opinion. It could be. What you try to do is get it down to the point where you're dealing with uh, factual information and, and leave the subjective matter to the side because we all carry feelings into a room. Sure. Sure. But you know, if, if Mike can justify a piece of equipment with a good justification, not just a want, a need, yeah. then... Then you would look at it. You know, well, sure. You're going to sure. look at, at both, both sides, sides of the fence. Yeah, good. Let me ask you about the election. I asked uh, mm -hmm. Mark Rasp about it, and I feel like I need to ask both candidates because this is a very unusual situation in our community. We're very. having one election on May 15th. Right. Two candidates who are on both the May 15th ballot and the June 12th ballot to mm -hmm. no fault of your own. One is a one-year seat and one is a three-year seat. Right. Um, first of all, what's your feeling about that? situation and, and if you were elected to the one-year seat, would you aggressively seek the three-year seat? Well, my answer is almost identical to Mark. We had talked about this previously. Uh, I had desired the one-year appointment because I would like to get in and, 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 and get a feel of the board and I'd like the board to have a feel of me in a one-year period of time. I think it's fair for the community to see somebody, you know, we have an opportunity to have a person there for one year and if we like them, we keep them. If we don't, we send them back home. Uh, would I accept the three-year position? Yes, but I, w I would prefer the one-year position you, just for the evaluative purposes. If you were to win, I guess my question is: If you were to win the one-year seat, mm -hmm. would you effectively tell your supporters? Oh, Don't absolutely, vote for me absolutely. For the seat? I, w I would hope, I would hope that the community would would sense that. Well, I don't know that. Yeah, because <laughs> well, I, I I think what the community needs to be aware of. Apparently, if if one person won both elections then the one person, the way I'm understanding the latest rule, I'm not sure it's official yet, would take the three-year seat. And you again would have a, a vacancy open and you'd have to have another special election. Correct. And I, I would hope that we would watch the outcome of this first-year election really close. And if whoever is put in that seat, that we just, even though we might like the person, even just move, move your votes another way. So at the end of the day, it's m most likely that both you and Mark will be on the select board. Yeah. Well, it, it's there's a possibility, unless the community decides that they just plain don't like one of us, period, <laughs> you know, which can happen. Well, considering that there's two of you running for the one seat, so one is going to win, mm -hmm. and then there's only one other, one other person running for two vacancies right. on June 12th, it ought to, mathematically, it ought to work out that way. Yeah, there's mathematically, room enough it for should. That. That's there, right. there is a possibility, but if one person won both the seats, then you'd have another special election to fill the one-year right, appointment. Right, that would, yeah, okay. And that would be very unfortunate. Okay, so we, that's great to clarify. Yeah. Appreciate that. So is there anything in particular that you want to talk about or that you is on your mind? No, I've, I've pretty well spilled my, uh, my <laughs> can of soup. I, I'm programmatic, programmatic type planning. Uh, that's my background. I, I like it. That's what I would like to bring to the board. Okay, so let's talk about taxes then. Mm -hmm. If you... Um, is there anything in your mind that would work to help increase revenue, such as the meals tax I mentioned to Mark, you watched mm -hmm. the interview, uh, that you might support to try to bring in revenue or any other ideas you might have? I mean, I understand you want to do line, you know, scrutinize the budget, mm -hmm. so the spending side, right. I think you've identified, mm -hmm. but what about the revenue side. Do you have any ideas about that? Or? Well, there's a lot of ideas, but I, I think before you can go into the ideas on increasing revenues or increasing taxes, you first ought to find out how we're spending our existing money. Look at money. the spending side. Yeah. And, and after that, yes, there's a lot of innovative things. You could go for meals tax. I mean, there, there's so you, all you kinds of things. So you would not be opposed things. to the meals tax? No, I'm not saying I wouldn't be opposed. We haven't seen the program put up. You know, we have to see what the impact is, and the reason for the revenue, as I think, is more important than anything. Okay, so you're not re ready to do that until you see, until you're comfortable with the, where the budget is. No, yeah. I, I think we need to see 
do we need all the tax dollars we have right now for active programs mm -hmm. or can we do some adjustments? So what about programs? Is there a particular program that's a favorite of yours in town that you think is, is particularly great? Or I. I like them all. I mean, I, I'm not partial. I like anything that deals with infrastructure and. <laughs> I got. That, I get that. And message. you know, even even with the schools and Do you the play development. With trucks? No, no. But I mean, even with the schools, I, you know, Capital supported the uh, the computerization this year. The, the grid. The, the, the approach, yes. The fiber was, optics. I yes, the fiber optics system. I mean, we realize we are not experts in 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 computer technology, but we can certainly realize the importance of and having the grid. And that should save the, the town some money long term. It it will save the town some money in the long run. There's no of it. And that is a very well thought out why approach. Don't you, could you, why don't you talk about that? That's a, that's a um, special article. It's not part of your mm -hmm. capital uh, Well, we were proposal. We were going to recommend a phased approach on it. Mm -hmm. And in turn, I believe the, the schools uh, turned mm -hmm. around, went to select board, and had some other funding set up for it. Well, it's, it's actually just a straight out Warren article yeah, but, to, but to our, begin funding it. Yeah, our initial one on capital was to fund it at about $100,000 per year and take the savings from the existing contract and apply it to next year mm -hmm. so that we would be cost serving all the way along until that debt was paid off, until we had the system fully in place. You were actually asking for quite a bit in capital this year. We did. Yeah, got a little, got a little hungry. <laughs> no, uh, that's just the tip of the iceberg yeah, on the needs no, of the sure. community. We always have that. But it's, inter it's interesting, it's a lot of great stuff here and I was, particularly when I, was, I interviewed Robin about this warrant, mm -hmm. just to talk about the articles, um, the pending categories, which mm -hmm. I thought that was an interesting concept that, pe that feeds to your planning mm -hmm. concepts. Why don't you talk a little bit about that? The which one, the fees? The, the, you, have, um, you, have two, you have some monies that oh, okay. were, you're asking us to oh, yes. set aside. Yes, okay, now what we... Pending, what we which did, is it, we've never done that before. No. I, w two years ago, I talked with Mike, and I worked with Mike, and I developed a vehicle tracking program. So I, had a, I had a feeling when I looked at the fleet that I was not comfortable when the consolidation of all the departments took place in town that we kept every piece of equipment. And I'm not comfortable that all those pieces of equipment were needed in the daily operation. So I asked them to do a fleet allocation study. I remember that. And it's, it's taken us about two years to get this completely done. So what we did in capital, we took the equipment that Mike put in the first year and we said, okay, we're going to set this aside based on the outcome of the fleet allocation study. And that's why we're doing this. We're putting a place marker on it and putting it over and if the fleet allocation study comes in and says we don't need it, then they'll be dropped. They just roll it back into wherever they It'll be rolled back in and there's projects sitting in the wings waiting to be funded. Sure, so but that does not give you the ability to spend that money then until it's re goes back into the pool. Right, it goes back into the pool. pool. Right. right. Okay. So there, I'm getting this, the uh, the high sign over there that we're we're, we're closing closing down. So um, last question. Yes. Why should I vote for you? Because well, obviously I can vote for you twice, but <laughs> why can I vote? Why should I vote for you for the first? Well, I, based on based on the information I've had with Capital, people have ha like had the opportunity to see me talk to the select board. Uh, they know where my background is and they know what I stand for. Uh, I want to help the community and I want to help it for infrastructure wise. I'm looking in long range. I'm looking 15, 20 years down the road. I'm not just looking at tomorrow. Uh, I have the energy and the ability to serve the community very well with my skill set that I bring forth. And uh, I'm going to stay in Long Meadow. This is my final stop. So I'm, I'm going to be very much part of the community. And I will be part of the community even if I'm not put on the select board. I'll stay with capital planning and we'll keep pursuing the same efforts. And I would appreciate the support of the community. I, and I know there's difficult choices ahead. You have grandchildren? I have one grandchild. In, the, in Long Meadow? Yes. Exciting. Yes. Is that yes. fun? Get oh, yeah. To, get to live yeah. right there and, and yeah. see them. Well, that's them why we moved well, north instead of south. I can certainly <laughs> appreciate that. Well, listen, thank you very much. Okay. I appreciate you taking the time to do this. And I want to encourage our viewers to vote. It's a, you know, it's a one issue, two candidate uh, election on May, May 15th. Mm -hmm for a one-year seat. Both individuals are on the ballot again for the, the next one. So, mm -hmm. uh, and both have said that if they win the one-year seat, they're gonna sort of back, mm -hmm. bow out as best they can yeah. for the other person to take the three-year seat. Yeah. So we encourage you to vote. Uh, and I thank uh, Richard Foster yeah. and, my, and Michael, Mark Borowski, Mark I keep Borowski. saying that. <laughs> my son is a friend, Mike, Mike Borowski. Mark Borowski for coming and spending time mm -hmm. with us this evening and thank you to our viewers. Yeah. Good evening. I have one.